Yeah, so I'm a professional biologist. Um, amphibians have been the group, the focus group that I've picked up as being the, the creatures that have decided in my life to become the champion. Some have called it the sixth mass extinction. If you talk to some paleontologists, they might say it's the seventh mass extinction. The hallmark of what is going on, I call it populations and endless retreat. Do you see hope? Out there. Hope is a word of finding yourself, the, the calm yourself. Now. That's the word hope. You're wishing that something could be this way, but it's not. But that, that word of hope, it could be utilized, but it doesn't make sense in the worst way. Worst. Hope is, you can only hope that they're taken care of. The toads, the toads themselves, they're there, but there's not enough of them. You know, I'm not, I, I don't want to blanket foresters. I've worked with foresters, I've taught with foresters, and uh, there are foresters that I feel that are jaw-droppingly inspiring um, and know amphibian ecology better than me. You know, foresters are very skilled professionals in their own right, but it is tied to an industry very much like professional biologists are. And one of the things that I think that is problematic is how they're defining wetlands. Very focused on streams, but when it comes to wetlands, I often find when I go into harvest areas that they're clipping wetlands. They don't even know they're clipping them, I don't think, so the buffers don't really get applied properly. So even on a basic level, the buffers that are supposed to protect our wetlands are not doing the job for two reasons. First off, even if it was applied correctly, the buffer's not wide enough to be able to protect the aquatic sites. And second, is because they don't seem to know how to be able to define where the perimeters of wetlands are. Um, over two thirds of the world's amphibians are currently at risk of extinction. Um, we have to start understanding that the functions that are provided by things like amphibians are contributing to our livelihood. We pay for hydro, we pay for electricity, but amphibians are processing the hydrological systems across our landscape. They're working for free, they're employed. I don't understand why we're creating massive amounts of employment in our forest industry by not capitalizing upon the services and functions by the creatures. I mean, if we were to go back 300 years and look at the bounty of nature, I mean, we hear stories about the fisheries and the oceans. I mean, that you could have walked on the oceans, there was so much fish. That the skies were blackened for hours with the passenger pigeons that were flying over. I don't even think that we can properly imagine the amount of life that has been lost. I think that um, we have to realize that our um, food network and our food system isn't going to be buffered against the issues of climate change. We're going to be facing droughts, it's going to get worse, and our ecosystems are the economic pieces of resilience that can help to buffer against this um, devastating future, and I think that's where we need to go. I mean, um, I. I, 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 I have just a thin threat, thread of hope. I mean, we, do, we can change this. We have the ability to do it. The problem is, as we know in the science of ecology, that there are thresholds. And uh, once you cross those thresholds, there's no reversing it. And um, we are at the cusp of that threshold. If we haven't already crossed it, we don't know. That's debatable. My name is Amanda. I'm the producer and director of a documentary we are trying to get off the ground called Fish of the Forests. This documentary is about the inevitable extinction of amphibians if we as humanity don't change what we are doing. I really don't want to focus on the doom and gloom of it all. We get that in our everyday lives with our news and social media feeds. So really, I want to focus this documentary on solutions. 
So one of the solutions could be sustainable forestry practices like selective logging. It would add jobs because the big machinery that clear cuts would be removed from the situation and it would go back to using humans to do the job. What would also help exponentially is unifying all of the voices that are fighting for this. We're all in our separate bubbles and really this film is bringing together indigenous land protectors and it's bringing in protesters for old growth forests. It's bringing in the public, it's bringing in loggers, it's bringing in scientists and we're all putting our voices together to create a sustainable change for everybody in the future and it would save the amphibians. I want to use this documentary to amplify the voices that are already out there and we could use your help. If you want to subscribe to our Patreon page, it's at patreon.com slash bricklightfilms. You'll get monthly updates, behind the scenes, interviews, the whole works. What we really need is investors. If you're a person who has always wanted to help and you've never known how, this is an opportunity. The money that we spend on this film will go to spreading this word, saving the amphibians and saving the environment for our futures. Money will be injected into communities that can badly use it. We need to start acting, because if we don't, that happy future that I know we can achieve, if we do something now, will slowly slip away from us.